Hello, and welcome to Innovation Insights. I'm your host, Frank Ballas from Emerald. And with me today is my guest, Dr. Levy Tillerman. Uh, Levy is a sp uh, was a special advisor for policy and international affairs to the US Department of Energy. He's currently a senior advisor to Valence Strategic, and he's authored a book, The Great Race, published by Simon & Schuster. He's a contributor to Wired Magazine, an analyst for Fox Business on electric vehicles. And today we're speaking to him as the lead of Circular Cars Initiative for the World Economic Forum. Levy, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Frank. So just to frame the discussion before we talk about the Circular Cars Initiative, one of the things we all talk about is the tailpipe emissions from vehicles. But what is less discussed is really the embedded energy and the embedded materials that go into vehicles. Could you tell us a little bit about, you know, how much of an issue is that really? It's a, it's a big part of the equation. So I think it's right for us to focus on tailpipe emissions. Today, that accounts for about 80% of life cycle emissions from, from a vehicle. That said, as we move towards electric vehicles, the proportion of emissions associated with manufacture and materials mm -hmm. is going to increase considerably. So by 2040, uh, we expect that more than 60% of the emissions of a vehicle are going to come from the materials and manufacture of that vehicle. Um, that is why the Circular Cars Initiative is important. Uh, without addressing those emissions, those manufacturing and materials emissions, we simply can't reach a 1.5 degree climate scenario. So, so it sounds really interesting. It sounds like the World Economic Forum is, is trying to address that bit of the problem. Could you tell us a little bit about sort of what the objectives are, how you hope to get there? The Circular Cars Initiative is a collaboration between members of the automobility ecosystem, including industry, fleet managers, and policymakers, among others. Uh, we have nine different automotive manufacturers who are currently involved. We also have steel and aluminum companies. Uh, we have a variety of nat nat excuse me, national research organizations. Um, and we have fleet companies like Sixth and Macquarie and Lease Plan who all realize that in the future, they're going to be able to capture more value from their vehicles over the course of those vehicles' life if that material is recyclable, um, if there are different ways to remanufacture different portions of that vehicle and to extend the life of the vehicle. And, and so when we talk about, uh, you, you mentioned that OEMs were part of the equation, obviously, you know, they're making the, the vehicle. Um, so there's a whole aspect of how do you design a vehicle to be uh, recyclable? And I guess they would maybe be the ones who take the vehicle back at the end. You, what, what kind of a role do you see for the OEMs? And, you know, are they active participants in this process? The OEMs are really one of the very critical players here. So I would say that there are three sets of actors that kind of set things in motion with respect to the automotive supply chain. As you know, the automotive industry is absolutely massive, trillions and trillions of dollars right. of revenue every single year. And there, there are kind of a, a few select actors who can set off a cascade through that supply chain. The first is the design teams, design and procurement teams at the automotive manufacturers. Um, the second is regulators, um, because just like the supply chain takes orders from the OEMs, the OEMs take orders from the regulators. Almost every single piece in that vehicle is regulated at the end of the day. And then a third actor that isn't quite as influential, but will be increasingly influential going forward is large fleets. And so that's why we're working with large fleets because they have some market power. Um, if you look at a company like Enterprise, they purchase 2 million vehicles a year, which is you know roughly a third the size of the German automotive um, market. So so some some of those fleet owners can have some pretty serious market power. Okay, so so the fleets are um, are a key part of the puzzle, but I, I guess the other bit of the puzzle is um, you know electrification. I think you mentioned that at one point. Um, it, do you see there being special challenges with electrification and and the the whole circular economy for vehicles? There are challenges, but there are also huge upsides. So the first challenge is that as we transition 
from internal combustion engines to electric vehicles, the manufacturing emissions actually increase substantially, mm. um, you know, perhaps as much as 50%, um, sometimes even more. So we did an interesting analysis of kind of a mock Tesla Cybertruck, and we benchmarked it against a Ford F-150. And the manufacturing emissions are just dramatically higher um, wow. for the Cybertruck type vehicle, two, two or three times higher. but at the end of their life, if you if you run that cyber truck off of green energy, then the cumulative cumulative life cycle emissions are only about half of F-150. And if you manufacture and you design that cyber truck as a circular car, they're about a quarter of the emissions of a of a Ford F-150. So there are a lot of opportunities there. So when we, you know, when we talk about transportation, we've talked about the automotive sector specifically, but do you think that the, the, the way that the transportation industry is changing with sharing with, uh, you know, scooters, bikes, and possibly even Hyperloop transportation, w would that have an impact on, on how the circular car uh, would actually function? Absolutely. And when we think of a circular car, what we're really thinking about is not an individual vehicle. We're thinking about something that's a little bit more conceptual, something that's a little bit more theoretical. So the ultimate circular car is not a vehicle that you manufacture with no emissions and then you can recycle. It's a vehicle that is integrated into a zero emissions auto mobility okay. ecosystem where we're utilizing lots of different resources as efficiently and as effectively as we can. Okay, and, and and so when we look at that uh, that, that entire loop, and, and we look at all the technologies that have to be developed for it, of course, as you know, from Emerald's perspective, looking at startups and venture, we try to figure out is there a space for um, for startups in that um, in that entire loop. The answer is yes. In fact, I would say the circular car is probably the biggest opportunity in automobility since the electric vehicle. Mm. The reason is that it's almost inevitably part of our regulatory future. I think that's one reason why we have so many OEMs who are so enthusiastically engaged with our initiative already. They realize that they are going to have to move towards circularity and they want to get out in front of those trends. So there are lots of opportunities for new business models, for new kinds of materials, um, for new manufacturing and recycling techniques. Um, if I were investing in the automobility ecosystem yeah. right now, looking down the road, thinking about where were the big new industries going to be in seven or 10 years, I would invest in circularity. Fantastic, Levy, sounds like a, a really exciting project. Thank you very much for, uh, for sharing your thoughts today and look forward to, to speaking again soon. Thanks for having me.